Hello Barmy Badger Army, welcome to today's show. Today we're going to be doing about Bingo issue 4088. Yes, there have been over 4,000 issues of the Bingo. Isn't that insane? And today we have a new kids in class 2B. We have new kids in class 2B. Minnie's in deep trouble. Um, Art Attack, which is always fun. A view to a chill and wacky races and lots more. So let's have a little look. Now, I think this is very brave. We've got the new editor-in-chief uh, bit that they're doing here, which is great. I think it's fantastic. I uh, really like the fact that they're bringing in a new section all the time. But this is my favourite part of it. And this leads on to a new thing. Um, Wilbur and Walter. So obviously... Wilbur and Walter. Now, this is what you're going to think. Obviously, Wilbur <laughs> is the evil mayor of Beano Town. And obviously, Walter is now guilty by association. And this is what I mean. So, Walter's character definitely changed from like being the sort of geeky, nerdy, softy Cuthbert who he used to be when I used to be. Now, he's like <laughs> the son of a supervillain, which is always amusing. So, there is a big jump there, you know. But uh, obviously they're off in this issue pretending and laughing about throwing away toxic waste. And then what? Even the editor's like, no, we can't do this. So then obviously it leads on to Minnie the Minx on the first page. Now this is definitely how comics have uh, evolved. You know, Minnie the Minx used to be a bit of a, not a throwaway character, but not something that would like be highlighted on the front page. And I think that's great that we've got Minnie in the first page of the book and uh, it's all the different adventures that uh, the family go on and you know they're really really kicking butt here we got some good references of like Godzilla versus Kong and stuff like that but look so <laughs> Minnie's parents get turned into massive sea dragons I mean this is the second page of the book today guys and then Obviously, you've got toxic waste jokes, you've got all sorts of stuff here. But look, you've got a Banana Man section. Well done for uh, putting your characters into all the different things. And um, and you've got, of course, Minnie turning into a monster, which I think is fantastic. What I have noticed recently is that they've been putting all the different characters in the strips. So you're developing a bit more of a universe which is great, I think it's fantastic. So you're getting a little bit of all the different characters in each strip, and I think that's great because it helps build the the universe. The one person that's missing without uh, any word is Tricky Dicky. And uh, I wanna know what's happened to Tricky Dicky. Come on guys, if you're gonna write out a character, let us know why, at least, you know. But we have Ha Ha Joke Shop, which is a new strip on there, which is really fun. Uh, something about plastic eggs and plastic bread and snakes in lunch boxes, which is insane. But um, I'm not sure if I would want to try this prank out where it's literally about putting food dye down your tap. I'm not sure about that one, but you know, each to their own. <laughs> I do love this one uh, where you've got Dennis the Mouse and Nasher unleashed. And I think it's fantastic. And of course, Nipper is in the episodes later, as I forgot to mention last time. But, you know, this is continuity for you guys. This happened ages and ages ago. I think this was before the 4,000th issue that uh, the um, elephant that sort of mates with Dennis ran away. I mean, I'm not too sure if it was before the 4,000th issue or not, but it feels like ages ago that the elephant ran away from the zoo and kept coming back and stuff. And that's a bit of a continuing storyline. So I'm not gonna tell you about that, but I think it's a good finish uh, on that. And hopefully we get to see some more adventures. Calamity James, of course, this week ties in with Minnie as a massive gorilla fights with the Minnie the Minx, slightly aggravated Scottish dragon, which I think is hilarious. Um, you've got the loop page, don't forget to get in for your competitions. And of course, the brains. <laughs> Numbskulls is a weird one. I'm not sure if I ever enjoy that or not, uh, but it is fun. Um, 
Billy Wiz, which I think is great. You know, having Billy Wiz back in is fantastic. I did miss Billy Wiz when he wasn't in the uh, the cartoon and the comics. I really did miss him. Uh, there's something about the Billy Wiz comedy that's just hilarious, isn't there? It's old school because I remember it when I was a nipper. Let's see what I did there. Now, here is something I thought was very brave um, and could be interesting to see how it works. I'm a bit worried that they're doing this, but in a good way. But they, it does mean that these characters are no longer throw away and they have to commit to them. They've now put in two new characters in the Bash Street comic. Now, this is a very brave thing because there hasn't been um, any new, what I would call, permanent characters in the Bash Street universe for a while. I mean, although they're part of the town, they do sort of have their weird own little bubble. You know, I think Minnie the Minx pops in every now and again, and it is a big school, but we only really see, um, like, Bash Street kids, but I'm guessing everyone goes to this school. I'm not too sure on the logic there. But, yes, two new people in, and I think that's very brave. But will it change the dynamic of the comic strip? It's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens there. Because obviously, uh, two new characters in. Will that upset the apple cart? Will they all make new friends? And all sorts of stuff like that. It's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to handle that. And uh, how it's going to handle the dynamic of the fun of the comic book. Because obviously, they're a bit worried. They're going to get in trouble on their first day. And they do. <laughs> of course, it's Bastard Kids. So, who knows? Don't you worry. Um, but yeah, I think that's hilarious. You know, and the fact that they're winding up the teacher with the register and stuff like that is quite good. And uh, very akin to modern schooling, I'm sure. <laughs> and of course you've got a new thing where you can uh, fill in your uh, Bash Street Kids portfolio if you were new to the class as well. So I think that's great. And it tells you a little bit about the characters as well, so that's good. Interesting way to introduce them in. Dangerous Dan, top spy, which I think is great, uh, involving a <laughs> frozen ice cream van, which is always good. Um, Roger the Dodger, off on races, which I think is always good. Roger the Dodger is one of my favourites. Now, he's made to a Tricky Dicky, so surely Roger knows where Tricky Dicky's gone. I'm curious on this one. But yeah, um, Roger the Dodger up to mischief on on different bikes and things like that. And uh, going to Whiddle, which I always find amusing. Um, a nice little uh, thing that uh, puts maths in, which I think is great. And me and Badger Jr. have already played this, and it's fairly fun. Wiles away 10 minutes, and it's Wacky Races, which is quite fun. And that's a little board game you get in the comic, and I think that's an ingenious little idea. Oh, yes. Right, okay. Now, uh, you've got Angel Face and, of course, uh, JJ, which are all right strips, but they're only short ones. Uh, they didn't really float my boat too much. They felt a bit throwaway, to be honest with you. But my favourite of this one has got to be the Banana Man Transformers mech jokes. I mean, these are quick fire. Sometimes you get a nice big Banana Man strip, but today it's only, like, two pages. But this is hilarious. And uh, you get the stereotypical Banana Man humour about nodding towards copyright infringement and all this sort of stuff. And they have done um, uh, jokes about Banana Man having a mech suit and things like that before. And they were really good. Banana Llama and all this sort of stuff. And the, and the banana suit and, uh, and all that sort of stuff is fantastic. One of my favourites is the one where he gets the robot suit. But they've done a different spin at this time where he becomes a massive banana and slips everyone up. So that's all right, isn't it? Poor old General Blight. But yeah, and you've got the usual stuff where people write in, which I think is great. And uh, Nasher and Nipper is always hilarious. Original Dennis ends up with no hair and uh, lots of shenanigans afoot. So there you go. Minnie the Minx is definitely sort of taking over as the poster child of the comic. But... Um, by the looks of it, Dennis the Menace will be back. I think they need to take turns a bit more, you know. It feels like Minnie's taking over the show a bit. Maybe every other issue, they should sort of have a different star in it. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, they should make sure that every character, not only Dennis and uh, Minnie, but all the other characters get a, 
hit on the main story. I think that's great. And of course, you've got the nocturnal uh, one there where they talk about the, the different people that write it. I think it's fun. And I really do enjoy the reader interaction in the Beano nowadays. I think it's great and it adds a lot of fun to the comic. Right, thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a good one. And don't forget to, of course, comment below if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon. I'm going to be reviewing the Beano Summer Special soon too. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this issue review of the Beano. See you later. Bye.